Chris Lovell here with the head coach of the Lady Pirate basketball program, Kyle Lovern, and uh, this is another edition of Pirate Talk. You can follow all these uh, on the YouTube page, LCISD on YouTube. You can also follow uh, the Athletics Channel on Facebook and all that. And Coach, first thing, how do we follow your program on social media? I know you're a big social media guy. Yeah, so LCP Girls B-Ball okay. um, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and so uh, we've got all those platforms right now. There you so, go. Yeah, we're pretty active on them. Love it, love it. That's the way of the world, people, man. <laughs> get with it, get with it. Um, so what's Kyle Lovern doing this time of year? This is still late September, kind of early yeah. October-ish. Uh, but basketball is kind of right around the corner. The weather's starting to change. You can kind of kind of start to sense it out there. Can't yeah, you? yeah, for sure, man. We're just trucking through off season right now, and uh, we kind of um, kind of uh, go through a little progression, you know, through off season. It's kind of like just uh, climbing a ladder, you know, right now. And so um, we're kind of just building things up offensively and defensively until we get ready for the season, and man, it'll be here before we know it. Yeah, there's no doubt. Have you built, uh, well, first of all, this, how many years is this here? This is year seven. Year seven, okay, so yeah. it feels like you just got here, but you've been here a long time. <laughs> yeah. It's like both, both can yeah. be true. Um, do you feel like you've built a, a program here? Because that's the hardest thing. It's easy to get good. It's sure. really hard yeah. to stay good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, in, in a sense, I, I feel like we have, you know, um, but it's these kids, man. They just, it's kind of just like I, I kind of lay some expectations out for them, just our parents, our administration, our school, our community. Man, they've just taken it and run with it. And and these kids are just so bought in. So you say that, and I'm like, well, I don't feel like I've really done anything, but these kids have, like, built this thing up. And it's just, it's kind of up to this point, it's kind of fed on each other. They do a really good job holding younger girls accountable. Um, they do a really good job getting our middle school girls and younger girls excited um, about the future and so um, yeah in a sense I feel like they've they've built this program and and um, you know every single year it's kind of like hey we'll see what happens and every single year man they just keep competing and these girls are just they, they do a good job being successful because there's expectations with your program sure. and yeah. you know that and yeah. you don't shy away from no, it, it, no. it you know chip, chip deals with the same yeah, thing coach sure. Winchy does I know coach Foreman's trying to get his program there too but I mean it's just there's expectations when you when you put that logo on and Coach Hill's dealing with some of that right now with the volleyball. They're, they can't seem to lose. But uh, what, what, like, when you talk about off season, what are your girls doing right now? And do you kind of have basically your team set, like, this far in advance before the season starts? Kind of take me through how that gets put together. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have our formal tryouts uh, the first two weeks of the school year. Um, but I tell them all the time, you're trying out 365 days a year. Yeah. You know, and so uh, we get a good idea of kind of what we might think we want our teams to look like uh, back in the spring. And then we kind of go through summer ball, see what adjustments we need to make from team to team and even on offense and defense. And uh, and then going into the school year, I mean, right off the bat before September 1st, we've got our teams made. And now that's important for us because uh, we got to start just building blocks, you know, putting them together. And so uh, that first two weeks, that's what we do. And then uh, right after that, we jump into what we call earn your uniforms. And that usually lasts about two and a half, three weeks. And it's something we started uh, probably five or six years ago, and the girls just love it. It's kind of a three-week, oh, oh, training camp. Yeah, training camp, military yeah. boot, boot yeah. camps type stuff, and a lot of conditioning. Uh, you know, we're we're big on quotes, and so uh, they they're memorizing quotes every single day. And um, there's just a lot of uh, disciplined, uh, you know, action that we're going through. And uh, after we finish that, and everybody earns their uniform. Then uh, we start uh, start our uh, offense and defensive progression stuff, and so that's where we're at right now. And usually we alternate weeks. We go a defensive week, offensive week, defensive week, offensive week, and we're getting to the point right now where we're actually getting into some team stuff. Believe it or not, we're just getting to the point where we're actually starting some five on five. And so we start little. We start basic, small, and we build up. And like I said, right now, uh, I shoot this week we're we're working on or introducing all of our zone offense and zone defense stuff. So. That's where we're at. We're, we're, we don't have everything on yet, but the season's getting close, so we're going to get there. Yeah, and it, yeah, just, I mean, and then, then you're, it's a marathon there from that point. How'd you get into coaching? Is this what you always wanted to do? <clears throat> you know, um, not at first. Um, and when I, I went to college at Texas Tech, um, uh, and then about halfway through, I changed my major and, and decided to get into coaching. Probably. What uh, were you majoring in? <laughs> I was actually majoring in physics. Okay. So oh. yeah. So uh, like numbers and letters, yeah, and all floating around. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So a lot okay. of 
a lot of a lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm kind of a, 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 a you know astrophysics okay. uh, space nut. So I've mark me down as one of those <laughs> who did not know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've uh, had a couple interviews with NASA over the years, and yeah, yeah and just I've I've kind of explored that. It's a it's a it's kind of a lost hobby of mine, and so um, I was interested in that for a long time. And I uh, just decided to take this route in the middle of college. And a huge impact of mine was uh, my wife. Um, we, we were high school sweethearts. Uh, she, we grew up in Canyon, same age. She played for Coach Lombard there, um, started as a point guard for all four years. They won three state championships, won the mythical, mythical national championship and her sophomore year. And we were dating in high school. And that just I was just kind of intrigued by their program. Obviously, a lot of people are. And then she plays it at LCU under Steve Gomez, which just, I mean, just fueled the fire for, for my, you know, passion to coach. And I saw that. And then, um, you know, about halfway through college, I changed my mind. That's what I wanted to do. I had some really great influences growing up as far as my coaches go. And so I just really enjoyed that. I love the game. Man, I love basketball. It's awesome. You know, I have a strong passion for it and, and just making impacts on kids' lives. You know, we, I feel like we buried the lead there, uh, <laughs> the NASA part. Uh, yeah, that, that, like you're blowing my mind there. But, but you know, if you just love sports and it makes yes, you go, yes, then yes. like you can't. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you know what I'm being paid. Sure. It doesn't matter who I'm. It's just like sports are just. It's just what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely, so, definitely. So, were, you, were your parents disappointed when you switched majors? <laughs> no, um, no, not at and, all. And, and it was yeah. probably like a lot of math and probably a lot easier. Yes, in yeah, some it ways. was a lot like, easier. I mean, now it's like, geez, man. I mean, yeah, you were aiming high there. Once I found out I needed to uh, change majors. Twelve years of school. Or well, something. I yeah. ended up changing my major to math, which wasn't much easier. So I took like <laughs> thirteen math classes in college, and it was brutal. But I got my degree in math and started teaching and coaching. So, and, and your coaching's in your family. Yeah. Yes. T- take me through your your brother's yeah. journey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, Last, uh, specifically last season. Yeah, and so um, uh, I'm, I'm a twin, identical twin. My, my twin brother, he's the head football coach at Stratford, Texas, um, way up north. I mean, the closest town in Texas you can get to Canada. And so uh, it's uh, football up there is a little bit different. I mean, uh, in Stratford, has, uh, they've got a long-standing tradition of being successful with um, you know deep playoff runs and state championships and uh, he's been there um, this is I believe his 13th year I think he's been the head coach for seven or eight now okay. uh, once he took over that program and uh, and has had a lot of success probably averaging over 10 wins a season but just this past season got him a state championship it was incredible it and was you were awesome. there to see it I was in yeah. Jerry world yeah. it was it was awesome and it was in the middle of our basketball season and it was actually right before we uh, took our big trip to Phoenix uh, last season and uh, I was able to make it happen so I wasn't gonna miss state championship yeah. game uh, at uh, you know in Dallas and so um, it was awesome and he just does a phenomenal job just carrying on that tradition and and man we pick pick each other's brains all the time there's so many things relative uh, in his program, in mind that you know, we kind of steal a lot of coaching stuff off of each other. So it's awesome. It's a pretty unique relationship. I I talk to him every day. He's my best friend. So that's awesome, yeah. man. That's awesome. Yeah, family. Yeah, and, and you, you mentioned that he coaches football. Football is such a great game, and there's so many things that football applies to all these other sports, Definitely. and like especially mentality 100%. and like you know cohesiveness 100%. and and all those things. I think yeah, you'd all all want your baseball team, your basketball team, or whatever to play it like with that football Definitely. mentality. Definitely. Um, girls, boys, doesn't really matter. Um, did you change anything like schematically last year from to this year without giving away too much? I mean, like do you do you say? Here's my program, ladies. This is what we're doing here. You, you, you better get to learn it. Or do you adapt to personnel? Do you kind of morph it as you go along? I mean, take me through without giving too much away how yeah. you go along there. Definitely. I've always just thought, um, you know, I've seen programs that, you know, kind of run the same offense every single year for year after year and decade after or the same defense. And you just know every time you see them or play them, that's just what they're going to do. And that's just not us. That's just not us. I, I don't have a style of basketball. I just I, – I want our style of basketball to be winning. So whatever <laughs> – I mean, whatever it takes for us to do that, it doesn't matter to me what offense or defense we run. You know, so what kind of kids do we have? You know, what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? What kind of size do we have? Okay, let's see if we can figure out an offense and a defense this year to, you know, to, uh, you know, to use with these kids. 
And so, honestly, in the spring, it was incredible. All these returners we have, and what we we just toyed and messed around with different offenses and different things. And we, I gave input, uh, got input from the girls. You know, a lot of our, like, you know, Callum, it's, you know, mentioned something. Hey, can we try this or work on this? And I asked Carissa, hey, you know, what do you think about this? Like, like just different ideas. And we probably tried four or five different things, especially offensively, back in the spring. And then finally found something kind of kind of that we liked. Um, and then same defensively. And so the team that people are going to see this year is uh, completely different than what everybody's used to. Um, you know, with the six seniors that we graduated, lost a, a lot of size, you know. And so our number one biggest concern was uh, not offensively, but is defending in the post, you know, and not even necessarily rebounding because I think rebounding is just an effort. That's an effort, you know. So uh, we're going to have that. But just defending in the post. And so we're, we're, we went through trying to figure out, hey, how do we prevent opposition from feeding the post? And so that's kind of where our defense is based on right now. Um, so it kind of got me outside my comfort zone. But once we kind of saw how the girls played this summer, then, uh, I mean, everybody bought in. And um, uh, you guys, I mean, everybody that watches us this season is going to see a really fast, exciting brand of basketball. So um, a lot of possessions a game. Uh, we're going to be uh, pressing a lot more. We're going to be playing a little bit more zone. Uh, the traps are going to be a lot more often. We're going to be switching defenses a lot, trying to uh, confuse the offense. And uh, we're going to be attacking the basket and shooting a lot of threes. There so, you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a little bit different than what we've been doing, but we're excited about it. So the girls have really bought in. And uh, I, I would just guess those coaches that are running the same offenses year after year, they're probably the ones that are not on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> just, just a hunch. Just a hunch. Um, uh, tell me about building the schedule. Because you, I notice, I look at your schedule, yeah. you're taking them to the Metroplex a couple yeah. times. I mean, and like, yeah. you, you just like, let's, let's go yeah. get some heat. Yeah, yeah so, let's, man, I'll tell you what, this is just uh, uh, my mentality. If, if you want to... If you want to be a lion, you better run with the lions. And so, I mean, really, since we've been here and just uh, and these girls have kind of built this program that we don't shy away from any competition. And so, really, I mean, rankings don't mean a ton to me, but I mean, we try to play as many ranked teams as possible before district starts. And so, yeah, the first three weekends of the season, we're actually out of town. We're going to uh, uh, three overnight uh, events, and the first one, South Oak Cliff Showcase. And so at the South Oak Cliff Showcase. Uh, it was an invitation only. Um, we're going to be playing uh, Hebron first game and then the second game. Then uh, we're playing Frisco Memorial. They lost in the state championship game, you know, to, in overtime at Cedar Park. And so we're we're getting it cranking right off the bat that first weekend. Um, the next weekend we're going back to the Metroplex. The uh, Dallas Mavericks and Frisco uh, ISD, they host a tournament together that's pretty loaded. It's pretty stacked. And so we're going to we'll be in the top, top uh, bracket of that tournament as well. Um, and then the very next weekend, we're going up to the Canyon Shootout. And at the Canyon Shootout, then the uh, very first game, every single time we go up there, we play Canyon. And so, man, it's just a yeah, it's a battle. Just first three, let's let's go get tested. Iron sharpens iron. And, and it, it is that, in a way, on purpose, in that your whole like preseason practices and, and like this time right now leading up, you you have their full attention because they're about to get. I <laughs> yeah. mean, they're about to get going yes. right out of the gate. So it's like, hey. Well, Better pay attention. Yes. You better know your stuff. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, we, we kind of try to take every single game, uh, you know, like it's the biggest game of the season. And so I don't I don't really like to, you know, build a schedule where it's like, hey, we're going to kind of build up and, you know, graduate up to our district schedule. No, let's play. Let's try to play some good basketball right now. And if we mess up, if we make mistakes, if we lose, let's learn from them and then let's go play another good team and see if we can beat them. And so that's that's kind of our mentality, man. We just we don't dive in with the sharks, man. We just want to go <laughs> like uh, let's let's play the best ones we can play, and let's see if we can just get better, you know, and, and to see if we can it'll it'll help us for district and playoffs. I love it, man. I love it. How'd you get into? Uh, do people know that you run these marathons? <laughs> yeah. When, when did when did you start some, doing that? Oh man. Um, well, I've always ran some little things every once in a while. Like, like define little. <laughs> like five k. Okay, like, well, so, okay. Okay. You know, something. To, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know what, during, uh, COVID, whenever everybody was kind of everything shut down, stores, schools, everything, you know, at first, the first couple of weeks, Chris, that was like pretty nice. We're just chilling at home, like relaxed, yeah. like not, you know, doing, and like after a month, I just kind of thought to myself, like, this is not good. Like I felt like this is kind of deep, but I kind of felt like I was just completely wrapped up in my job 
and I didn't have that at the time. Like I didn't have things to do. And I've always enjoyed a little distance running. And then my brother-in-law, he does it a lot. And so I got into it. And, um, man, it's well, it's my favorite hobby right now. Um, every Almost every morning then I get up and run before the sun comes up. And um, and it's taught me a lot of discipline. You know, it's uh, I think it's been a good example for my kids uh, to watch me do stuff like that. And, and, and it is not easy and it's really got me outside of my comfort zone and I, I'm just kind of personally I'm like you know I, I did a you know you start with something small like a 5k and then you do a half marathon I'm like okay I could maybe do something else like I thought that was my limit okay maybe let's, let's see if we're gonna do something more you know so yeah. uh, the last few years I've done three or four marathons um, and I love trail running so I, uh, not necessarily just on the flat street or pavement in town, but I love to go into the mountains and run. And so we traveled a little bit to some different races. And I just finished my first ultra marathon, which is a 50 K. It was in Mineral Wells. It's uh, it was 32 miles um, around uh, Mineral Wells State Park. And uh, and then coming up, man, I've got a I've got a little redemption. Uh, we're going to Powder Canyon. They host a 50 mile race in powder canyon i'm gonna see if i can finish that what are so. you doing I mean, yeah, what, yeah. yeah so do you, do you, do you ever yeah. want to do like boston or New York, uh, i can like tell you like those I, I mean you no. got to qualify for that stuff okay. and, and you have to have you know you have to be pretty fast uh, i'm not fast you're, you're it's more of a I can, exercise I can go, like discipline for sure you. yeah but I, I yeah like i said i'm not fast but but i, I can go a long ways without okay. stopping so wow. um and uh it's been it's been one of the most incredible kind of transformational things I've gone through in my life just because uh, I'm telling you, uh, you have really have to be mentally tough and kind of, uh, it's, a, it's an individual battle to get up every morning and put some shoes on and go hit the pavement. So, um, but it's been good. We'll see if I can handle this Paladuro race. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Stay for, for clever Thanks. You, uh, you coached uh, sisters last year. And Catalina and Carissa. Okay. I coached a lot of sisters. <laughs> it, and now you have a whole, a whole, a new set. And Callan and her, her sister Abby. Is there a, a weird dynamic with coaching sisters like that? All you know what? Team? You would think that there is, and, and I'm I, sure they're all different. They, they are. Know, they are. But man, it's I, I love it. I love it. And what's funny is because I kind of embrace it because I played with my twin brother growing up. You know, and uh, he we both played football in high school and middle school. I mean, just growing up, and he was our quarterback. I was a wideout and. And we just thrived. And so, like, this year we have the two Dallas sisters. Uh, we've had the two Cortez sisters. We've had uh, Naya and Tori Thompson, those sisters. Um, uh, they had the Douglas. They didn't, Douglas sisters didn't play together, but uh, uh, they were a year apart to play. Avery you know, and, and so sister, Avery yeah. and Lily. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, shoot, and even coming up, we've got Ferguson sisters. We've got, uh, we've got two twins in eighth grade right now that are coming, you know. And so I love it. I embrace it. You know, I think it, it hasn't been hard at all. I think it's kind of helped our team because it kind of brings a little family dynamic. Yeah, so, that's, that's fun. Yeah, it's fun. If you could change one rule in girls' basketball, what would it be? Like high school girls' <laughs> basketball. If, you, if, you, if they said, hey, coach, and you get to mess with the rule book, you could uh, affect one rule, what would it be? That is a great question. Um, you know, I've never thought about that. You know, something that I get asked about all the time is the shot clock. Right. And um, used to, I would be very opposed to the shot clock. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I've, I've been in some state committee meetings where over the years where they talk about that stuff. And there's been some research and studies done about it. And even in Texas, I mean, because there's other states across the United States that that have the shot clock in high school. And, uh, you know, if you went to a game and actually timed every possession, everybody would be shocked that um, they probably play as fast as a shot clock. You know, the, the, the times that people get upset about it is whenever uh, uh, people are stalling, just playing stall ball, holding the ball. That's whenever people get upset about it. Um, for us, as far as our program and our team, um, I, I'm kind of indifferent. I, I think I think uh, if you don't have a shot clock, then coaches and teams have the freedom to, you know, play different styles of basketball, and I think that's fun. And then if you do have a shot clock, I think it re would really force more teams and players to just raise their IQ of the, of the game. And so for us, especially this year, it's not going to matter because we're going to be shooting the ball in five or ten seconds anyway. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be yeah. So. Um, I don't. I wouldn't have a rule I would change, but I, I do get asked about the shot clock a lot. Kyle Lovern is very organized. This is my view. <laughs> what is Kyle Lovern not good at? Oh gosh, 
Um, I so what does uh, he feel like he was better at? <laughs> what does he feel like I was he better at? Because yeah. I, I, I view you as very organized, very on point, very on top of everything. But what do you kind of feel like? I need to pick this up. I need to be better at this aspect. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I think um, uh, I think a couple of things that come to mind. One was specifically with basketball and coaching and just our program and our staff. Like um, sometimes I take on the mentality of like, hey, if I want something done right, I need to do it myself. You know what I mean? And so that's not always. To, you need to be able to delegate. Yeah, I need to yeah. delegate a little bit better. And whether that's to my assistant coaches or whether it's, that's to my seniors or uh, my players, then, you know, like delegate more, give more ownership and, and freedom to, to people that might be underneath me. But, um, you know, but at the same time, then, that's, you know, that's been a strength a little bit too, you know. So um, that's probably something I need to work on. Um, and then something else, I, I'm always just looking for ways to make our program better, and whether that's through um, – you know, down to elementary schools, the middle schools, our high school program, our scheduling, our social media, our the way we film games, uh, the way we stack games, yeah. like just anything that we can do to just tweak and make our program better. Um, those are changes that I would, you know, I'm all all about, you know, and um, yeah. So uh, those are the first two things that come to mind. So there's, I I am. Uh, I'm not perfect by any means. I try to stay organized, but man, I, I mess up all the time. And so, like, uh, and I'm pretty good about owning it, you know, but I'm just, man, I'm just trying to get better every single day. So, man, I feel like I could sit here and talk to you for two more hours, but we got to let you go. <laughs> be fun. We, yeah, we got to let you go. That's Kyle Lover, and this is Chris Level, and this is another edition of Pirate Talk.